Hello students, this is a lecture on the pharmacology of the autonomic nervous system. The autonomic nervous system is a system of nerves and ganglia that innervate the blood vessels, heart, smooth muscles, viscera, and glands and controls their involuntary functions consisting of sympathetic and parasympathetic portions. Autonomic comes from the Greek word autonomia, which means independence. Important terms to know are neuron, which is a specialized impulse conducting cell that is the functional unit of the nervous system. Axon, which is the appendage of the neuron that transmits impulses away from the cell body. Dendrite, the branching process of a neuron that conducts impulses toward the cell, ganglion, a mass of nerve tissue existing outside the central nervous system, CNS stands for central nervous system, which is the part of the nervous system comprising the brain and spinal cord, PNS stands for peripheral nervous system, which is the portion of the nervous system lying outside the brain and spinal cord. SNS stands for somatic nervous system, which is the part of the nervous system that controls voluntary movements in the body, such as those performed by the skeletal muscles. ANS stands for autonomic nervous system. The central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system comprise the nervous system. The peripheral nervous system is then subdivided into autonomic and somatic. The autonomic is then subdivided again into sympathetic and parasympathetic. The autonomic nervous system is the part of the peripheral nervous system that acts as a control system functioning largely below the level of consciousness and controls visceral functions. The ANS affects heart rate, digestion, respiration rate, salivation, perspiration, pupillary dilation, micturition, and sexual arousal. Most autonomous functions are involuntary, but a number of ANS actions can work alongside some degree of conscious control. Everyday examples include breathing, swallowing, and sexual arousal, and in some cases, functions such as heart rate. The ANS is classically divided into two subsystems, the parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous systems, which operate independently in some functions and interact cooperatively in others. In many cases, the two have opposite actions where one activates a physiological response and the other inhibits it. An older simplification of the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems as excitatory and inhibitory was overturned due to the many exceptions found. A more modern characterization is that the sympathetic nervous system is a quick response mobilizing system and the parasympathetic is a more slowly activated dampening system but even this has its exceptions. This diagram shows the nervous system divided into the central and peripheral nervous systems. The peripheral nervous system is divided into autonomic and somatic, and the autonomic is divided into parasympathetic and sympathetic. This image shows a neuron which it, uh, shows the cell, the dendrites, and the axon. The sympathetic system's general action is to mobilize the body's nervous system fight or flight response. It is, however, constantly active at a basic level to maintain homeostasis. The parasympathetic system is responsible for stimulation of 
rest and digest, or feed and breed activities that occur when the body is at rest, especially after eating, including sexual arousal, salivation, lacrimation, urination, digestion, and defecation. The sympathetic division neurons originate in the thoracolumbar portion of the spinal cord as preganglionic or presynaptic nerve fibers from the intermediolateral cell column. The long postganglionic neurons extend to the organs they innervate. Parasympathetic division neurons originate from four cranial nerves in the brain and from the sacral regions of the spinal cord. The short postganglionic neurons synapse at or near the target organ. This image compares parasympathetic versus sympathetic. The origination of the preganglionic fibers in the sympathetic are shown here in the thoracolumbar region, and the preganglionic fibers shown in the cranial and sacral regions in the parasympathetic. In the nervous system, afferent neurons carry nerve impulses from the organs to the central nervous system. The efferent neurons carry impulses from the CNS to the organs or extremities. An organ is a grouping of tissues into distinct structures that perform a specialized task. The ANS is unique in that it requires a sequential two-neuron efferent pathway. The preganglionic neuron must first synapse onto a postganglionic neuron before it innervates the target organ. The preganglionic or first neuron will begin at the outflow and will synapse at the postganglionic or second neuron's cell body. The postganglionic neuron will then synapse at the target organ. A synapse is a junction that makes contact. The importance of autonomic drugs to dentistry. Some autonomic drugs are used in dentistry. Autonomic drugs may produce adverse effects important to dental hygiene. When a patient has xerostomia, drugs can be used to increase salivary flow. However, these drugs can have cardiovascular effects. Many other drugs have autonomic activity or autonomic side effects. Neurons communicate with each other via neurotransmitters. A neurotransmitter is a chemical substance made in the neurons that are released when an action potential comes down the neuron. This is a preganglionic neuron. The nerve impulse travels, releasing the neurotransmitters, which then activate the postganglionic neuron which then releases other neurotransmitters to activate the target tissue. Receptors are structures, usually proteins, that receive neurotransmitters released from the axon terminals of the neuron. Receptors are located on the dendrites of postganglionic neurons and on or in the target organs. They usually are referred to as lock and key in their adaptation. Here is an example of the action potential traveling through a presynaptic neuron and the synaptic cleft is the space between 
the presynaptic neuron and the postsynaptic neuron. The neurotransmitters are released and then they lock into the lock and key mechanism in the postsynaptic neuron which then activates an action potential. The neurotransmitter is removed by enzymes which degraded into an inactive metabolite or by a process of reuptake whereby the specific neurotransmitter is taken back up into the axon terminal where it is then inactivated by enzymes. The primary neurotransmitters of the ANS are acetylcholine or ACH and norepinephrine or NE. Other neurotransmitters include epinephrine, dopamine, serotonin, and GABA. Acetylcholine is a chemical substance secreted from the ends of many nerve fibers, especially in the autonomic nervous system, and is responsible for the transmission of nervous impulses. Drugs can have one of four basic effects on the autonomic nervous system. They can have an adrenergic or sympathomimetic effect, which stimulate the sympathetic branch. They can have cholinergic or parasympathomimetic effects, which stimulates the parasympathetic branch. They can also have cholinergic blocking or anticholinergic or parasympatholytic effects, which inhibit the parasympathetic branch. They can also be adrenergic blockers or sympatholytics, which inhibit the sympathetic branch. Cholinergic relates to an agent that mimics the action of acetylcholine. Adrenergic releases or activated by adrenaline or an adrenaline-like substance. The sympathetic division neurotransmitters. ACH or acetylcholine is released from all preganglionic neurons. Therefore, all preganglionic neurons are cholinergic. Norepinephrine is released from most postganglionic neurons, which then crosses the synapse and has an effect on the tissue or organs. These are known as noradrenergic neurons. Sympathetic nervous system receptors. Adrenergic receptors are referred to as alpha and beta receptors. These receptors receive the neurotransmitters. They are located on the target tissue or organ and postganglionic neurons. Acetylcholine is the neurotransmitter released from the parasympathetic, preganglionic, and postganglionic nerves. The parasympathetic nervous system has two types of cholinergic receptors. The muscarinic receptors are located in the autonomic nervous system in the sweat glands, skeletal muscles, eyes, gut, penis, and lung. Stimulation by acetylcholine causes increased secretions, bronchoconstriction, meiosis, and erection. Nicotinic receptors of the parasympathetic nervous system are found in the CNS and the somatic system and are located in skeletal muscle and the CNS. Stimulation causes contraction of skeletal muscle and neurotransmission in the CNS. Adrenergic sympathetic agonists. An agonist is a chemical that binds to a receptor and activates the receptor to produce a biological response. Alpha-1 receptors are located on smooth muscle of the blood vessels supplying organs such as the heart, the skin, the salivary glands, and the smooth muscle of the eye. 
glands, GI tract, and urinary bladder. Direct acting agonists bind directly to and activate the neurotransmitter receptors. Examples of alpha-1 receptor direct acting agonists are nasal and ocular or eye decongestants, such as phenylephrine and oxymetazoline. Alpha-2 receptors are located on the ends of presynaptic neurons. An example of a direct acting alpha-2 drug for hypertension that decreases blood pressure by decreasing heart rate is clonidine or catapress. This concludes part one of this lecture for pharmacology chapter three.